Good morning. Good morning. That was Lee. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. How are we doing? Good morning. Thank you for shaking it up back there. That's awesome. Do that during the music, too. Okay. Um, you might have noticed that Sherry's not here. No worries. Susie is, um, and she'll be preaching for us. Uh, we, we've had her here before, I believe, so we're, we're in good hands. Um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm just kind of following down the program here. Unfortunately, your captain of fun is having some leakage issues at the house, and game night is going to be postponed because currently the kitchen sink's not working. So just, you know, keep your ears out uh, for when we're going to have that game night, but it's not going to be this Saturday. If you show up at my door, I'm going to say, hey, how you doing? See you later. Okay? <laughs> so, yeah. How so. are you at plumbing? What you should say. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that would be that would be a good option. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Juliet is uh, directing The Secret Garden. We mentioned that last week as uh, Pastor Sherry did the message. Uh, tickets are $14 for adults, $8 for students and senior citizens, and it is going to be at the Rep on March 19th, 20th, and 21st at 7 p.m. There's also going to be a matinee on the 22nd at 2.30 p.m. That's this coming weekend. So I'm sure that if you contact the box office at the Rep, or if you just contact Juliet, I'm sure that she'll be able to point you in the, the correct direction so that you can get your tickets for that. She would love to see you at the show. Uh, you might notice a, a new announcement coming up on the 25th, Women, Gay Bars, and Religion. Hey, that sounds like a good mix. Uh, there is going to be a uh, reception at 5 and a lecture at 5.30 at the University of Toledo. Again, the information is in the program if you'd like to direct your attention to that. <laughs> would you like to start, sir? Yes. Let's worship. <laughs> Thank you. 
the end of winter, the beginning of a new spring, new sunshine, sunlight that shines on us and brings hope to our hearts, it makes us feel alive. We thank you for the blessing of a new beginning and the coming of Jesus Christ. Lord, we come here to open our hearts for a spiritual discipline that can renew us over and over again. We want to turn our heads to you, and that's why we're here this morning. To remember that we are blessed, that we are loved, that we are whole and perfect just the way we are, that you have given us everything, that you have made us the way you want us to be, Lord. We thank you for all of these wonderful blessings, and we pray in Jesus' holy name, amen. Kids, you are dismissed to go downstairs, and I will be reading our scripture today from the Gospel of John. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version of chapter 2, where Jesus cleanses the temple. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about anyone. For he himself knew what was in everyone. I'm going to invite Susie to come up and bring our message. She is the faith organizer for Equality Ohio. I guess I'm also taking questions at this time. Can yes, Beth. Village statement? Oh, the one. village statement. Did I skip the village statement? Yeah. yeah. I did, didn't I? Would you like to do the village statement, Beth? No, but could you? I, I will, and you can read it along with me. It'll be up on the screen. It's also printed in your program. We are the Village Church. When we gather in community, we remember that God is with us. We know that we are imperfect people who make mistakes. We give thanks that God loves us anyway. In this community, we practice patience, compassion, and forgiveness. When we leave this gathering, we go out to share God's healing love with a broken world. We are Jesus' instruments of hope in our world. We are followers of Jesus, and we can change the world. Now I'll invite Susie to come forward. Thank you. And it's very good that uh, we recognize that we're imperfect people who make mistakes, so that you'll accept me even in that <laughs> so that mistake. Just the way you are. Thank you. That was planned, right? You wanted to let it have that moment. I, I wanted to, you know, because if you saw the uh, icon on our um, Facebook page, it said no perfect people allowed, so I figured I'd fit right in. Thanks for being here, Susie. Thank you. Good morning, Village Church. How are you today? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm very happy to be here. Second time being here, at least up here, but I've been able to worship, worship with you a few times as well, and it's always fun. This morning, <coughs> I want to take you into a little bit of an imagination with me as we first start. The streets of downtown Toledo are bursting with vibrant colors. 
spirited laughter and lively, energetic crowds. The sun is shining down on all of us, marching in the parade on this cool summer's day. It's Toledo Pride, the fifth annual to be exact. While marching down Washington Street, past the Toledo Mudhead Stadium, turning onto Summit Street towards Promenade Park, I'm overwhelmed with what I see. I see young people dancing enthusiastically on the rainbow colored float they made themselves. I see inspired activists reciting chants of equality, fairness, and opportunity for all. I see communities of faith marching in solidarity. I see artists, performers, drag queens in beautifully sequined headdresses and gowns determined to finish the mile-long march in heels. <laughs> I'm not marching alone as one solitary queer woman of faith, motivated to empower my community and better my city. No, I am not alone. Directly to my right and directly to my left, I see my family. My sister, my brother, my cousin, my father, all marching alongside me outwardly expressing their validation, support, and love for who I am. In this moment, I am so proud. I'm proud of my family and their willingness to publicly support me and the community I'm part of in such a public way. I'm proud of my gay and transgender community, their energy, determination, and inability to step down when faced with discrimination and oppression. I'm proud of myself remembering who I was at 16, never believing I could be this authentic in such a public way. Most importantly, in this moment, I'm proud of my city, looking in every direction, up to the skyline, over to the Maumee River, looking all around me so that I can take in each face, smile, and cheer of every Toledoan celebrating and marching with me. I felt God in this moment. Surely this is the beautiful city that God has called Toledo to be. Dare I say, this was a glimpse of the kingdom of God. The beautiful city we have all built collectively and will continue to create together each day. Can you see it? Can you imagine it? The setting in our scripture this morning seems radically different than the scene we just imagined together. The story of Jesus in the temple begins with the gathering of many Jewish people in Jerusalem in recognition of the Passover. Upon entering the temple, Jesus is horrified to see people selling cattle and money changers exchanging currency. <coughs> in a disturbing image for some of us, we see Jesus using a whip to drive people out of the temple, overturning the money changers' tables, making their coins fly out into the air, and scatter all over, shouting, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. In uncertainty and, unlikely, and likely anger, the Jewish people asked Jesus for a sign that would justify what he was doing in the temple. Jesus replied, destroy this temple and it will be raised up in three days. Knowing that the temple took decades to build, the Jewish people were in disbelief, wondering how Jesus could raise it up again in three days. The text then shifts to a time after Jesus has died, where his disciples remember what Jesus had said in the temple and understand that he was not referring to the physical temple being destroyed and raised up in three days, but his own body through his death and resurrection. The story of Jesus cleansing the temple is one we recall hearing as children. It's a popular story, one we've heard many times. We firmly believe that we know exactly what is going on in the scripture. That Jesus was upset and angry with the merchants selling and exchanging goods inside the temple instead of right outside in the courtyard where vendors were allowed. We think that Jesus was horrified. The temple had become a place of selfishness and greed. That he was claiming his own authority as the living God here on earth. An alternative view of this story shows us that Jesus was not necessarily angry because
because people were buying and selling goods in the temple, but because within those exchanges, people were being cheated and taken advantage of, specifically people who were poor and oppressed. Jesus was so upset with what he saw because he knew a better way. He understood the necessity of having sacred relationships with God. In the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, this story comes near the end of Jesus' ministry, alluding that his cleansing of the temple directly relates to his crucifixion and death. Unlike the other Gospels, the Gospel of John places this story right in the beginning of Jesus' ministry, when he is just starting out as a teacher and storyteller. Having this story and Jesus' early moments of ministry teaches us a few things. Perhaps Jesus was just beginning to understand his mission in the world, still struggling with his identity, unsure how to be a minister of God, unsure how to live up to who God has called him to be. However, he did seem to understand that in order to have spiritually fulfilling lives, there must be a focus on respect, mutuality, and love, not greed and selfishness. In this story, Jesus is calling us to be better, to seek fulfilling relationships with God and God's people. In the Gospel of John, the story of Jesus cleansing the temple is directly followed by a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus about the kingdom of God. This highlight interests me the most because in this conversation, Nicodemus asks Jesus, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus responds, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Jesus is not only validating the actuality of the kingdom of God in this exchange, but he's describing to Nicodemus his own belief and vision in the kingdom of God. I like to believe that in this story, Jesus enters the temple fully knowing and understanding what the kingdom of God looks like on earth. He's our example of righteous anger, the moral obligation to respond to injustice. I'll say that one more time. That's a good one. Righteous anger, the moral obligation to respond to injustice. Jesus sees the chaos in the temple. He's shocked, knowing with deep conviction that this is not what being in relationship with God looks like. His vision of God's kingdom on earth does not include selfishness, greed, oppression, and self-advancement. On the contrary, his vision is one of justice, love, and communal support, something built together something to be proud of. When I imagine the kingdom of God here on earth, in Toledo, Ohio specifically, I imagine a city that not only supports, but embraces all people. People without homes, those who are hungry, those who experience violence, those who experience racial injustice, those who call other countries home, those who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender. Toledo-based community leaders have come together in our recent past to react to the injustices that are evident in our region. For those who are hungry, we have Food for Thought, an organization that provides food assistance through mobile pantries each month, where patrons get to choose themselves the items that they would like to use in their homes. As a response to homelessness, we have Toledo Streets, a local newspaper that employs people without homes as vendors, where they receive 75% of the earnings that they make. For those who are LGBT, we have organizations like Equality Toledo and Equality Ohio, whose mission it is to create a city and state where all people receive fair treatment, regardless of their gender identity and sexual orientation. Clearly, we have many community members community leaders and organizations to be proud of in our city, but there's still so much more work to do. What injustice do you see in this city? 
What stirs up righteous anger in you? How will you choose to act and respond to that injustice? Imagine this beautiful city of Toledo where all people are accepted, loved, and embraced. What role will you play in creating the kingdom of God here on earth? Marching in Toledo Pride last August was the first time I ever participated in an LGBT affirming action in my home city. I've experienced discrimination and have been witness to countless other oppressions in this city. I have chosen to react in righteous anger by celebrating my LGBT community and participating in a public way. I could have chosen to sit on the sidelines, stay quiet and comfortable. Instead, I chose to participate in life. Not only participate, but invite my family, the people I care about the most, to join in with me. I'm so glad I did. This participation allowed me to experience God in a new way. It gave me the privilege to be my authentic self, just as God intended, alongside those I love in this beautiful city that has raised me to be who I am today. This is my glimpse of the kingdom of God on earth. This is what God has called me to do. It's my life's work. What is your life's work? What is God's kingdom calling you to do? For our reflection after the message, I have a little bit of a worksheet for you to, to reflect on and meditate on some of the questions. On the back of that worksheet are some opportunities for you to be involved in the city of Toledo, uh, uh, basically uplifting LGBT people's lives in Ohio and, the, and Toledo as a whole. There's a few um, LGBT health fair events coming up and, and faith panels specifically that are coming up on campus. Um, so there's some opportunities for you, for you to be involved. As we go through that little meditation, we'll be showing a, a quick video which is from, if folks know, the musical Godspell. Um, it was, there was a bit of a revival of that musical a few years back. And this um, title song, We Can Build a Beautiful City, um, is, is sung by the, um, I guess, actor that portrays Jesus in Godspell. It's a beautiful song, so definitely listen to the lyrics and reflect on what you hear. Thank you so much.
Lord, we thank you for answered prayers. We've had so many of our people in and out of nursing homes and hospitals, and it gets tiring. It gets tiring on their caregivers, Lord, when we ask that you would bolster them with your energy, with your love. But we thank you for when they do come home and that you continue the healing process when we are at home with our loved ones. But we still lift up those who are still in the hospital and still need, in need of your care and your love. These are only the prayers that have been mentioned, Lord. There are so many more that weigh on our hearts and minds. And joys, overwhelming joy, Lord, that sometimes we just, we're just so happy that, you know, sometimes we might forget to thank you. We lift that up to you, too. You want to hear about everything in our day. Remind us, Lord, that you are always there. You are just a prayer away. When else can we say that we've just read a great book and we can just turn around and talk to the author? You are always there, Lord. Thank you for giving us your son. For it is in his holy and precious name we pray. Amen. We'll be taking up our offering now, and it is our, it is our custom as the basket is passed that you would reach out and touch the basket to bless the giver and the gift. We know many of you give electronically, and, and that's great, but if you just go ahead and reach out and touch the basket as it goes by, that would be awesome. Thank you. One more announcement as we're getting set up up here. Have you noticed the new name tag configuration? Have you noticed that? Do you know why we went to the new name tag configuration? It was all about the setup crew doing pickup duty of name tags off of the floor because they fell out of the name tag holder. So I'm going to ask you to do what my mama always told me to do. And that was to put things back the way I found them. That was your name tag just slipped right in there and behind that little plastic thingy. No, it was not. It was clipped on, wasn't it? Say yes, it was, Kristen. Yes, it was, Kristen. Are you gonna clip it back on when you put it put it back? Say yes, yes. I will, Kristen. Okay. You know, if you don't clip it back on, we're gonna know who didn't follow directions. <laughs> because your name is on it, guys. I'm just saying. Okay, Kristen. Okay. Thank you. All right, so when you guys are ready, if you could stand and clap with us as you're doing, as the bass is going around. Just how much you mean to me now. But you have 
close us out with a final blessing, please. Everyone thank Susie once again for being here. It's always great to have a wonderful speaker, someone who's knowledgeable, friendly, fun, all that good stuff. I hope I, I have all those things. Yes. Let us all pray together. Loving and creator God, take us, use us, encourage us, motivate us, inspire us, empower us to love and serve you and your people so that we may be builders of your kingdom here on earth.